Everybody wanna be a dealer. Everybody wanna be a killer. Everybody wanna be a pimp. Everybody wanna be what we see, even though we know it ain't them, and we know that ain't you. Welcome back, family. For those of you new to the channel, I am Ryan the God, and we are the Kingdom. Now, if you're new to the channel and this is your first time seeing my face, do me a quick favor because I'm trying to reach a goal of 2,000 subscribers by the end of this month. Hit that subscribe button for me and then turn on those notification bells. After that, hit that like button. It just helps with the algorithm, helps me get monetized, all that good stuff. It takes nothing, only takes a second, costs you no money. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you three seconds. Go. I think they're doing it. I think they're doing it. I appreciate your life, my brother and my sister. Now for today's video, we have Millionaire sues his ex-wife after doctors tell him that he's not the father of their three sons. Let's just get right into it. Now a man who discovered after being diagnosed with the life-limiting illness cystic fibrosis that he couldn't be the father of his three sons because the condition causes lifelong infertility has told this program the news left him feeling suicidal. Doctors revealed in 2016 that Richard Mason couldn't be the dad to the children who are now 19 and 23. Richard sued his wife. Of so, so he raised these kids until they were adults. So he wouldn't have had, oh my gosh, he raised these kids all of his life. And now, it, this is what I'm talking about, man. I'm gonna get back to the video, but this is what I'm talking about. When, Women scream, scream, I said scream. When women scream equality, right? Now I am all for equality. I've said this like, I think the past couple of videos, I am for equality. I think men and women should have the same exact rights. It doesn't, you know, it just, whatever. Just, that's a blanket statement. Men and women should have the exact same rights. But for the women who are always screaming equality, they never, they never bring up stories like this. Because men get duped just like how women do. But you know, you don't hear stories like this. This man raised three kids and his wife didn't didn't tell him? Come on, man. And she wasn't even gonna tell him. She was just gonna so she was gonna let this man think that those kids were his forever. And then the kids don't even know who their real real father is. Like what kind of person who does something like this? I'm getting super tough tongue tied today i don't know what's going on somebody slipped something in my drink all right look, look, let's go let me back it up a little bit then we go but that's that's shady man you can't you can't do that mm -mm -mm. to the children who are now 19 and 23. richard sued his wife of 20 years kate and they recently reached a settlement of 250,000 pounds with her admitting she'd had an affair while the couple had been married let me tell you something 250 pounds, I'ma just, I know it's a different conversion for dollars. I'ma just say $250,000. That's not enough. That's not enough. If you raised kids that weren't yours and pretty much lied to for 23 years, because the oldest kid is 23. So you were lied to for 23 years and they only gonna give you 250. You know how much it costs to raise a kid? I think it's like uh, $80,000 a year for one kid. That's an American. I think it's like, it's, it's a lot of money for one year. He did it for 23. I'll, get her, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. He did it for 18 years, three kids, 18 years. And he only wants $250,000. She break, she's coming off easy, man. Of 250,000. And they recently reached a settlement of 250,000 his wife of 20 years, Kate, and they recently reached a settlement of 250,000 pounds with her admitting she'd had an affair while Richard sued his wife of 20 years, Kate, and they recently reached a settlement of 219 and 23. Richard sued his wife of 20 years, Kate, and they recently reached a settlement of 250,000 pounds with her admitting she'd had an affair while the couple had been married. Well, we spoke to Richard and his current partner, Emma. When he said to me, you've got cystic fibrosis, I immediately thought, oh my God, my sister died of that at 29. And her death was very hard for me because with cystic fibrosis, you slowly suffocate on your own phlegm. And it took her two years to, oh, to eventually, um, waiting for a heart and lung transplant. And then she died on the operating theater. So immediately I was just very saddened by that. But then um, when 
the discussion then turned to fertility and he said look um yourself and emma you know you're gonna have difficulty having children because you are as a man with cystic fibrosis infertile it was suddenly like being hit by a sledgehammer i just went oh my god you know you you suddenly realize that you children aren't yours so i so said well, immediately you knew the significance of what he just said to you yes yes both of you mm, there, were, there were medical experts in the room and you know they it's impossible without what would you what would you do hmm most you so you you've just been told that you have this disease that killed your sister and you know that it's going to kill you inevitably it's, it's going to kill you and you find out that your kids that you raised aren't yours just think about that you think i'm gonna hit play you think about that out ivf for a man with cystic fibrosis to to have a baby so then i said well you must have the diagnosis wrong because i've already got three boys and but i sort of was like clutching at straws there so after that it became a complete blur for me because it was almost like you know i don't know if you ever hit your head really really hard and it's like a ringing and you just you you can't see anything that's going on around you you can't think of anything that's going on around you it's almost like you you just have this ringing in your ears and it's all the implications of everything as a result of that start you know flashing through your, your mind like what kind of questions are you then immediately yeah. asking yourself you just wanted to go straight to to phone kate his ex-wife say kate spare me the dignity just tell me the truth was there anyone else when i'd managed to compose myself it was about an hour later i sent her a text and i said look um and the, this text has been in the, the press, but it, it was actually repeated verbatim from what I sent to her, and it's still on my phone now. I said to her, look, I've just been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. I'm not expecting you to be sympathetic about that, because she's a very hard person. And, uh, but the reason I'm telling you is that the boys are not likely to have been fathered by me. Now, obviously, there's something's gone on. And if you are honest about it with me, um, I don't intend to sue you and you can decide how you want to tell the boys if you want me to be there at the same time that's fine um but if you if you lie to me then i'll i will take action okay this this is a really good guy okay he was like if you just tell me the truth then then i'm not gonna do anything and you can tell the boys how you want to tell them better man than me i'm telling you that right now I'm not a petty person at all, but that's that's a really good deal that this is a good guy. I heard on there's a podcast called Poor Man's Podcast. You can probably YouTube. It's called Poor Man's Podcast. And he brought up the topic of having mandatory uh, mandatory paternity tests when a, when a child is born. I think that's a great idea. I think that it should be mandatory for a man to have a paternity a paternity test to see if he is the father of that child before he is able to sign the birth certificate so boom the baby's born Wah! that's how the baby's cry then you got to get a paternity test if you are the father okay no harm no foul you sign that thing now you're you know everybody's everybody's honest but on the occasion that you are not the father and this woman does not tell you now you know now if now you know and if you still make the decision to sign that birth certificate then then you're good now a lot of people don't know this if you sign a birth certificate then you are obligated to take responsibility for that child even if it comes out like years later that you're not the father you still have to take care of that child because you signed the birth certificate so the birth certificate is kind of like a contract pretty much for a father taking care of that child so i think i think a mandatory paternity test should be that should be a thing i don't know why it's not and i'll decide how i'm telling the boys and the immediate response i got back was um i am sympathetic 
But whatever science says, those boys will always be yours. Uh, see, I see play with the words. Those word. boys will always be yours. Word play. Which was a... slightly different than mm. saying you are definitely yes. the dad. Oh, when you boy. were diagnosed, your sons were 21 and the twins were 17, I think. Yes. When your then wife was pregnant on those occasions, did you ever suspect, have any inkling, ever think, oh, that's a bit odd, at the time of the pregnancy, through the birth, afterwards? Um, th there was one or two occasions that uh, after the boys were born I thought that they didn't resemble me as much as you know you'd imagine that, that, that boys would. They didn't look like you? Um, well they've got darker eyes than me. I have almost no body hair and the boys have got very dark hairs on their legs and things like that but around the time that she got pregnant we were we'd been um, having unprotected sex for seven years nothing had happened mm. now she always said to me i have a tilted womb i don't know what that is but it means that it's harder for a woman to get pregnant so we'd always thought it was her and we'd gone for uh, fertility treatment or f to see the gp to start the fertility process and the gp said well the first thing that uh, has to happen is you have to be tested mr mason mm. and then we test uh, your wife mm. Now, it's likely to be three occasions of, of um, IVF that you're going to need. They're about £5,000 a time, so it's £15,000. But after that, there's a good chance Sheesh. you'll have a baby. So when we went home, we both were working at Barclays at the time, and um, she said, look, you know, we've got our careers. We're both, I mean, yuppies was a, like a, 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 in the 80s, a, you know, really like popular term for young people who were... Uh, doing well in their careers she said we're both yuppies let's just carry on with our careers and see how it goes a few months later she was pregnant so i thought oh my god that's weird because you know you often hear of people going for treatment and then suddenly naturally yeah. get pregnant and she said oh it's just one of those things so i did feel a little bit like well, that's a surprise you know because we go for the to start the ivf then decide not to and she gets pregnant this is, I mean, you've described the turmoil, you've described it feeling like you were hit with a sledgehammer. Did you, did you consider taking your own life? Many times. The consultant said to me once, um, cystic fibrosis kicks in, and I'm one of the oldest people in the UK with cystic fibrosis, and probably the oldest person ever that yeah. I know of to be diagnosed the with it. The average uh, death is 41, and, and yeah. most most children die of it a lot younger mm. like a sister as well at 29. Yeah. So you know that you've not got a particularly pleasant future. Mm. How did the knowledge then of discovering that your boys couldn't be yours affect the way you felt towards them if at all? Um, they're still my boys and I still think of them as my sons now. So I have no, hold on. I, okay, so a lot of people, because he said that they're still his boys, a lot of people would say, well, why are you suing? Why does it matter then if you still feel that way? For a man, it, you just... First of all, men get paternity tests, like, even if they say, like, no matter what the paternity results say, I just wanted to, I just need to know for me. For men, it's, it's very important for them to know. I don't think women will understand it because they know that the kid is there because it comes from them. So before a man, you kind of have like that, I just need to know from me. I don't expect women to understand it, but you have to respect that. Just because it's something that you all don't go through. Um, all right. Have been their dad. Um, Do you love them as much? <laughs> you can't, you can't not love somebody. Yeah, you raised them. Because, in fact, you know, even, um, you know, if, if somebody committed some sort of um, offence against you. If the boys had done something wrong, I'd still love them, you know, but they've done absolutely nothing wrong. They're completely innocent in this as well. They are the victim, like I am. So, of course, yeah, my, my arms are still open for them and I would dearly love them to, you know, to come back into my life. Well, two of them, I understand, aren't in your life because they are cross that you sued your ex-wife, Kate. Yeah. Um, it, it's paternity fraud. You said you won this court case, this settlement of £250,000 from your wife. Why would you risk your relationship with your boys when you say you are their dad, you love them as much, by going ahead with that legal action? I always brought my boys up, to be honest, stand up to bullies, never 
tell lies That's all the question. time. I, I was divorced from her for 10 years, and all the time they were with me, all the weekends that they were around at my house, I used to say to them, look, do not keep any secrets from your mum. Be open and honest with her. You know, anything I do, anything I say, I don't mind your mum knowing about it because it's, I want an open, honest relationship with them. So I brought them up to be open, honest, stand up to, to what you think is right. Somebody committed a 21-year fraud yeah, against me. Yeah, but not me. them. And now no, you've no, lost no. two of them. They're not in your but life. But the point is... See, this, this is what kind of makes me a, a little bit upset. He's not suing the kids, okay? He's suing the mom. And it's the principle of the thing. Does he need the money? Probably not, but it's the principle of it. And I'm surprised that he's only asking for $250,000 for three kids that he raised all, all of their adolescent life you know it's just a principle man that's just like saying yeah whoever's watching this if you have you have a closet full of t-shirts right you got a whole bunch of t-shirts and then somebody comes in and they just take two of your t-shirts right do you need those two t-shirts no can you you have money to go buy more t-shirts yeah pretty sure you do but it's the principle of someone just stealing from you someone violating you that's pretty much what it is. And this guy, he's a nice guy. I keep saying it, man. He's only $250,000. As the boys, the boys are gonna understand as they get older. Cause one's like, I think they're like, uh, like 17 and the other one's like 23. They're still pretty young. As they get older, they're gonna realize what their mom did was completely wrong and that their dad is right for suing their mom. All right. How do I? allow somebody who's committed something like that against me, my ex-wife, to just go off scot-free. Yeah. Because there are many times... Because the risk is you lose two of them and that's what's happened. But they're grown men. Yes. They're grown men. Mm. They understand that I have to take action against it. In, in families, when there's been tragedy or, or anything like this, history tends to repeat itself through generations. And Richard wants to ensure that those boys don't think this is normal behaviour. She was completely denying that I wasn't the biological father. So f up until the court case, only a few weeks ago, she was still saying, even with DNA evidence, I'm sorry, the DNA evidence must be flawed. And the court case You're is, the biological has absolutely father. settled that, yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't not understand why some, emphasis on some, some women do this, not all. All women don't, aren't treacherous like this. There are a lot of amazing women out there. But some women will just lie even when they are caught red-handed. How are you going to dispute DNA? You going to tell the man that the DNA test is wrong? You going to tell the man that the science, that he is not the father, is wrong? Man. <laughs> so, if I am the biological father, those boys all have a risk of having cystic fibrosis. They all need to tell their insurance companies. Mm. They need to tell their potential partners. Their children might have cystic fibrosis. I wouldn't even be allowed to meet them because people with cystic fibrosis cannot meet other people with cystic fibrosis because they cross infect. Right. So by going to via my solicitor, finally, she then a few weeks ago said, actually, I accept you're not the biological father. The boys have got no chance of having cystic fibrosis from me. I can meet them now, and they're free of knowing that they've got a potential genetic disease. See, and he's, and another reason of him wanting to know. Again, some women are incredibly selfish, so they only think about themselves. He's saying like, I need to know also because if they have it that we can't meet, it's like a, a disease thing that we you have, we have to worry about other things besides who lied and who didn't lie. He's thinking more so down the line. He's thinking logically. While some people are just worried about being right or wrong. Understood. Do you know who the father is? I have no idea. Why have you offered a £5,000 rewards to find out? I was toying with that as a, as a um, strategy because what I, what I feel like is two-fifths of my life, 20-odd years of my life, have been a complete um, lie. The person I thought I was, I'm not. The, the relationship I had with the boys is not the same as, as, uh, as I thought it was. Um, a wife that I thought was 
was loyal, but I had to divorce because we didn't get on. I was not. So what I want to do is sit down with this guy and say, were you there in their life? When I was watching them play football, were you there? Did you buy the Christmas presents? How did you um, deal with the first pregnancy? Yeah. You know, did you know about the pregnancies? Did, were you there for the second pregnancy? You want to meet him and you want to ask yeah, those questions? Yeah, you want to find yeah. out what happened. It's almost like you've been in a coma for 20 years and you wake up and you think, God, this guy is a significant participant in my life that I have never met. Okay. That's, that's, man. That's like you just waking up one day and then everything that you know to be true for 20 years is just a lie. You know how that messes with your head? So so what now? What next? He's pretty he's pretty much like too old. Well, he can't have kids because he has that disease that makes him infertile. So that's he he pretty much he wasted a lot of his life taking care. I'm not gonna say he wasted. Well, yes and no. He kind of like wasted his life man he could have been like off marrying somebody else and i don't know man 20 years and then he doesn't even know who the dad is and then the mom probably doesn't even know who the dad is it might be a one night stand you know i shouldn't say that because i'm assuming right now i shouldn't i shouldn't say that she might know who he is but she's gonna tell you she doesn't know who it is or make up a lie mm -mm -mm. i tell you and I have a desire to do that before I die. Do you know when that will be? Uh, my lungs have deteriorated about 15% in two years. Oh, Lord. And that level of deterioration may be six to ten years. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. We appreciate it. We wish you all the best okay. as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, man. This man is a saint in my eyes. I tell you what, if he doesn't get into heaven, nobody is. I'm telling you that right now. I'll tell you that right now. There, there should be mandatory paternity tests. They should be mandatory. They, you know what's crazy? They, we're all t we're always talking about women's rights, right? But we never talk about men's rights. Most of the law is catered toward women, especially in a divorce, anything dealing with kids, you're, the man, anything dealing with like alimony, child support, the man is guaranteed gun, going to lose because the world doesn't care about men. It's quite clear that the world does not care about men. If the ship's going down, or oh, we need women and children first. The world don't care about us. I don't know. I hope he gets that, that lung transplant and gets on to doing what he needs to do. But I really do think there needs to be a serious conversation about men's right as well. There should be just certain things in place for men and for women as well. Because women have special needs and men have needs as well. So that this... Because this happens... I've seen cases like this maybe a dozen times and that's what i'm that's not me searching for them that's just coming across growing up in life and hearing stories like this and then like men still having to pay for like kids that aren't even theirs so the woman finds out who the real dad is and then on the weekends the kid goes with their real dad and then you still have to pay child support for it and they're with their real dad man come on i'm about to get mad thinking about it Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Just hit that subscribe button. It takes two seconds and hit that like. That only takes one second. Um, that's it for today, and I will see you on another video. Yeah. We know that you lying about all them weapons you got, that's cap gun. You see what I'm saying? No caption. Y'all love cap. I'm sitting on Chrome 24 it, bruh. Them hub caps. Please stop with the thug rap. Public transportation, only time y'all bust.